All right. Hello. Welcome back to uh, mock test number four. So this is the fourth time I've gone through a full ACT math practice test. My name is Blake. I used to be a high school math and STEM teacher. Now I work in online uh, curriculum creation, online curriculum development. However, I am starting this YouTube channel to hopefully grow a little community here and help you all practice for your standardized tests. And into the future, we're going to explore all other topics of math. However, the goal right now is to lock in the perfect 36 on the ACT math. And I'm not going to stop making these videos until I get a 36. So maybe it's today, maybe not. Um, I say we go ahead and put one hour on the clock and get started here. So let's see. All right, one hour. Deep breath. Let's get going. Okay, so we've got a recipe here that makes 16 small cakes with two and a half cups of butter. How many cups of butter are needed if you're going to make 80 cakes? Okay. Um, the nice thing about 16 and 80 is, so 16 times 2, 32, times 4, 64, times 5, 74, 80. So 80 divided by 16 is 5. That means we're making uh, a 5x recipe here. And if we need 5x, we need 2 and a half. Oops, that's not a half. Two and a half times five. So two times five is ten. A half times five is two and a half. So we have twelve and a half total cups of butter needed. That is that's a lot of butter. But hey, that's what makes pastries good. On to the next. All right. The following shows the highest temperatures in degrees Celsius of a certain week in a city. Okay. What is the mean highest temperature in degrees Celsius of the week? Okay, so we're just going to take all these numbers, add them together. And then divide by the total amount of numbers we have, which is 7 in this case. So let's see, those cancel. 2 minus 1 is 1, minus 6 is minus 5, minus 9 is minus 14 over 7. So the average temperature is negative 2 degrees, which does kind of match with the data up here. Letter H, on to the next. All right, the temperature F in degrees Fahrenheit is related to the temperature C in Celsius by this equation, which we normally use fractions, so we don't have repeating decimals, but same relationship. Which of the following temperatures in Fahrenheit is closest to 41 degrees Celsius? So if we have 41 in for the C, we're basically just solving for F at this point. And, you know, fractions might be easier, but I'll just write the repeating decimals here. Okay, so we're going to add 17.777 to both sides. So 41 plus 17.7778. And then we're going to take that whole thing and divide by 0 0.55556 to get F. And I'm going to bring up the calculator for this one. So what do we get here? We have in parentheses on top. We have 41 plus 17.7778. Close our parentheses. Divide by 0.55556. We get 105.8, which is pretty close to 106. Okay, we might have been able to do some process of elimination on this one too, but that's okay. On to the next. Let me disappear the calculator. Now on to the next. All right, suppose that A and B are non-zero. Which of the following expressions is equivalent to 6A squared B to the fourth over... 2a b squared. Well, we have, I'm just going to write this out in its expanded form for learning's sake. So 6 times a times a times b four times, and then over 2 times a times b twice. Okay, so we're going to cancel a couple of those b's, one of the a's, and then the 6 goes to a 3, and we cancel the 2, and we are left with a b squared. That's it, AB squared. Oh, sorry, three, the three. Let's not forget the three. Three AB squared, letter F. On to the next. Okay. So if the cube root of C is equal to D, and D equals three, then what does C equal? So the cube root of C is equal to three. I'm going to come here and cube both sides. So now C is equal to three cubed which is 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. Letter C, on to the next. 
All right. Tong purchased a music box for $20 and sold it at a loss of 15%. What is the selling price? So, okay. So $20 times uh, 85%, which is 100% minus 15%, should be equal to, I'm just going to do a calculator. I could estimate in my head. But we're going for speed today. So 20 times 0.85, 17. Easy peasy. That looks like that is answered G. On to the next. Okay, so we've got this long decimal number, very precise number, and it looks like they want it in scientific notation. So I'm just going to write it out cleanly here, 0, 0, 002345. 3, if we wanted to move this decimal, we can move it 1, 2, 3, 4. Actually, they're going to have it just at the 2, right? So, sorry, 1, 2, 3, and they're going to end it right here. So this is 2.3456 times 10 to the negative uh, 1, 2, 3. So 2.3456 times 10 to the negative 3. Yep, and it's negative because our decimal is tiny. It's not a giant number. Okay. All right, a circular pizza is divided into eight congruent sectors. What is the arc measure in degrees of each sector? Okay, so here's our eight congruent sectors. Well, there's four. Here's eight. And they're asking what the internal angle of one of these is. So we know a whole circle or a whole pizza makes 360 all the way around. So somewhere in the middle is 360 divided by 8. 360 divided by 8 is, what is that, 45, I think? Yeah, 45. Oh, that totally makes sense, right? 45, 90, 180, 270, 360. So it is 45. Easy. On to the next. All right. When 3 and 4 sevenths, <coughs> excuse me, is written as an improper fraction in lowest terms, the numerator is, okay, so 3 plus four sevenths, three and four sevenths, which is seven sevenths and four sevenths. Or, no, no, it's not. That's one and four sevenths, sorry. 21 sevenths and four sevenths makes in total 25 sevenths. Uh, and then in the lowest terms, the numerator of the fraction is, well, seven is a prime number, unfortunately. And 25 is not, let's see, divisible by anything but... Five, so I think 25 is the lowest we can go there. Can't divide by 5, can't divide by 7. On to the next. Okay, no, a little matrix math here. Okay, so they want us to evaluate this. This is great. These ones are actually not so bad. You just apply the 3, like distribute to everything in here. Same with the 2. And then subtract, match your patterns. Should be good to go. So we've got 3 times negative 1, 2, 0, 3. Minus 2 times 4, negative 2, 5, 1. That's going to be equal to negative 3, 6, 0, and 9. Minus, actually let's add, and we're going to go negative 8. So we'll bring the negative inside. Plus 4, uh, minus 10, and minus 2. So all in all, that is, you add those together, we get negative 11, 10, negative 10. And 7. Is that an answer? Negative 11, 10, negative 10, and 7. That looks like it's answer G. On to the next. All right. If 5 is added to 3 times of a number X, so 5 plus 3X, then the sum is equivalent to the number 2X. Which of the following equations can represent the word phrase? I think I just wrote it. 5 plus 3X equals 2X. Oh, no, that's wrong. That's 5X. 5 plus 3x equals 2x. You've got to watch yourself on these answers here. They're, they look very similar. Okay, on to the next. All right, an inclined platform AB is built next to a stair BC by cement as shown in the figure. If the height of the stair is 2 feet, okay, and they have that shown, and the length is 5, what is the area of the cement used? Okay, so yeah, yeah, I think they're just looking for this area here basically which is essentially a 5 by 2 rectangle split in half. 5 times 2, half of that, half of 10 is 5. That's our answer. That's easy. Let's go. All right, the table below shows the quantity N for a toy car produced and its cost of production C. Okay, so if you produce four cars, for example, it costs $19 to produce four. Which of the following equations represents this relationship between N and C? Okay, so... Looking for an arithmetic to start here. That's plus 4, plus 4, 
plus four, always easy, plus four arithmetic is kind of my first pattern I look for. So basically, uh, our cost goes up by four times whatever our quantity is, plus this initial starting condition of three, which is like cost of machinery. So four in plus three, four in plus three. Answer C. All right, Mr. Wilk made a rectangle fence with a side 80 feet and another side 102 feet. What is the total length of the fence? Okay, so short side's 80, long side's 102. It's a rectangle, so the other side's 102 and this side's 80. So all together, adding perimeter, we get 160 plus 204 is 364. Answer H. Thanks, Mr. Wilk. On to the next. For the equation 7x minus 5y equals 14, pause. Don't forget to drink water while you're testing. It helps your brain. For the equation 7x minus 5y equals 14, which of the following expressions represents x in terms of y? Okay, so just rearranging here, we have 7x minus 5y equals 14. We want to solve for x in terms of y. So let's add 5y to both sides. And we're going to get 7x equals 5y plus 14. And then we'll divide by 7 on both sides. And we're going to get x equals 5 sevenths y plus 14 sevenths, which is 2. And so we have 2 plus 5 sevenths y. 2 plus 5 sevenths y. Answer C. All right, the perimeter of a parallelogram is 100 inches. Suppose that the length of one side is 21 inches. What are the lengths in inches of the other three sides? So a parallelogram is just basically a rectangle that's been shifted slightly. Uh, and perimeter is just the length around the outside. So they're telling us that the total perimeter around the outside is 100 inches. And then they're also saying that one of the sides is 21. So let's just say that side's 21. That makes that side 21. So in total, we have 42 plus 2x, this being x and this being x, equals 100. 2x equals, what is that, uh, 58. So therefore, x equals 25 and 4 makes 29. 29 and 29, I think those all add together to make 100. You can check me. So we already have a 21, so we need another 21 and then two 29s. Answer H. On to the next. All right, we know that the price of pizza... So this is one of those questions that has a couple that all relate to the same note, the same chart and all that. So I'm just going to star these ones and come back to these ones at the end because they're kind of grouped together. I don't want to spend a lot of time here when I can be doing these individuals. Okay, so in the figure A, B, and C, D are parallel lines. E, F, and G, J are straight lines. And I'm just going to look at this. E, F intersects A, B, yada, yada. They have a drawn. Isn't that nice? All right, two angle measures are given. What is the measure of JGB? JGB. So they're looking for this angle here. And we know if that's 100 up there, then this is 80 to make 180 in total. And if that's 80, that means this whole thing is 80. And if this whole chunk is 80 and that's 50, then question mark is just equal to 80 minus 50, which is 30 degrees. Answer G. All right, the monthly expenses C of a company selling mathematics textbooks is defined by this equation. Oops. Cost is R, the rental fee, uh, plus 150 times, I assume, the number of, what is N? N is the number of employees, okay. The rental fee is $550. There are 35 employees for the month. So plus 35 times 150. Okay, so this is the total cost of having all these employees, and it looks like they're comparing it to 160 identical textbooks. So they're trying to find the price of a single textbook. So I'm going to take that total cost, divide by 160, and that should lead us to our answer. Let's see here. So if I come here... Start with a fraction. We've got 550 plus 35 times 150. And then on bottom, we're dividing by, that's all the books, same price as that whole day, $36.25 per book. Let's pray that that's an answer, is it? 25, let's see. 
3625, boom, answer E, and get rid of the calculator, and on to the next. Okay, let's just do a quick peek really quick. We are 21, or actually 20 questions in because we skipped a couple, and we are how many minutes in here? We are 15 minutes in, so we're actually doing really well on time, but the beginning of the test does end up being a little faster than the end. So one more deep breath. Let's get it rolling. An experiment consisted of rolling <laughs> a six-sided dice with the digits one to six on its faces, one digit per face. It's thrown 900 times. Here's our distribution. In what percent of the total number of rolls did a four appear on the top face of the dice? So the total number of rolls, and we care about this column specifically. So we are going to be looking for 180 over all of that added together. So I might, yeah, I'll write it out. Might as well. 127, 157, 169, 180. Oh, they say 900. They already told us up above that this is rolled 900 times. So use our context clues. I bet you if we were to add these together, we'd get 900. And 180 over 900, that actually should be 0.2, I th or 2.2, so 20%. Oh, yeah, 20%. 180 is, 18 is double nine, but it has one more zero on the bottom, so it's 0.2, 20%. It's beautiful. The base of a triangle is four meters longer than the triangle's height. So the base of a triangle is four meters longer than the height. So height plus four. And then here's our height. And here's our triangle. Okay. Gosh. <sighs> uh, let's try that again. There we go. Power of technology. The area of the triangle is 30 square meters. So A equals 30, which equals one half base, which is H plus four times height, which is H. And what is the height? That's what they're looking for. Oh, and it's just the equation. So let's not get carried away. Uh, divide by one half on both sides, a.k.a. multiply by two. 60 equals H plus four times H. Uh, there it is. 60 equals H plus four times H. On to the next. What is the length in coordinate units of the line segment with endpoints negative two comma three and four comma negative five? Uh, what is the length? Okay, so negative two comma three to four comma negative five. What is that length? So here's four comma negative five. Here's negative two comma three. The height difference between these two is uh, eight, three minus negative five. And then the width is six, four minus negative two. So the square root of six squared plus eight squared should be our diagonal length, which is the square root of 36 plus 64 which is the square root of 100, which is 10. Letter H, on to the next. All right, the point 4, 7 and the line x equals 6 are graphed in the xy coordinate plane below. After the point has been reflected across the line, what are the new coordinates? Okay, so we're reflecting across the line to right here. The gap from here to here is 2, so the new gap is also going to be 2. So we go from 4 to 6 to 8. But the y value stays the same at 7. So 8, 7. Letter E, and on to the next. Okay, the area of a circle is 49 pi square inches. What is the perimeter of that circle? So our area is 49 pi. That's all the space on the inside. Area equals 49 pi, which equals pi r squared. Therefore, if we cancel our pi's, r squared equals 49. So r equals 7. The radius of our circle is 7, and therefore the perimeter is pi times 2 times radius, or the circumference, rather. So circumference is 2 pi times 7. 14 pi, please be an answer. Let's see. 14 pi, letter G. On to the next. All right, the average mark of a group of 15 students in mathematics test is 75. Mark, uh, I think that's a grade for y'all Brits. Um, if a student with 59 marks is included in this group, okay, so I've seen these before. So, so the average score, so you, uh, all the students added together, all students added together scores divided by 15 equals 75. Now we have all of these scores plus a 59 divided by 16. And then what is the new average? So question mark. 
So we know that all equals 75 times 15. So we can just do 75 times 15 plus 59 over 16 should equal our question mark. Oh gosh, do I have time to explain that? I don't think so, but I do have time to do the calculation here. 75, 15, plus 59, on bottom, 16, please be an answer. 74, right on the dot, answer D. Okay, I basically just recalculated the new mean, uh, assuming that we had like the whole other one kind of categorized in one group. Okay, on to the next all right, what is the least common multiple of the four numbers, 3, 5, 7, and 11? Well, this is em these numbers immediately stand out to me because they are all prime, which means something when you're looking for the least common multiples. So like 15 could work, but 7 is not divisible by 15, nor is 11. So 15 times 7 is 70, and 35 makes 105. So 105 might work because 3... 5 and 7 all go into that, but 11 doesn't go into that. So it's like 105 doesn't work. Um, 11 doesn't go into 165. I mean, literally, I think there might be another way to do this, but I think we're just going to go with the biggest one. So 3 times 5 times 7 times 11, because they're all prime, I think that should be the case. And I am going to do a calculator for this. It's just a lot of math. 3 Five, seven, eleven. I'm faster. Eleven fifty-five. All right, is eleven fifty-five an answer? We're gonna go with J. I might start this one to come back and think about it a little bit more. All right, on to the next. Which of the following expressions is a factor of this polynomial? X squared plus four x minus seventy-seven. Well, I'm just gonna kind of write it out like this, how I like to, and think of two numbers that multiply to seventy-seven. How about seven and eleven? And that's great because those numbers can add to make 4. So we're going to go positive 11 and negative 7 because we have a positive 4 in the middle. And therefore, that is a factor. It looks like x plus 11 is not included, so A is our answer. On to the next. All right, a cylindrical tank is used for storing water. The depth of the tank is 35 inches, and the radius of its base is 20 inches. Okay, so we have this is not a, an ellipse. Let's try that again. That'll do. All right, so the radius of its base is 20 inches. Got it. Um, and the depth of the tank is 35 inches, so great. Maximum volume of water that can be stored is 80%, so 80% of the overall volume. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Which of the following values is closer to the maximum volume of cubic inches water that can be stored? So it's 80% of the volume of the tank. So uh, 0 0.8 times pi times the radius squared times the height, 35. Oh, and look, all these answers just are expressions. So is it liter it's literally this first one. Is that right? Yeah, area of a cylinder is the area of the circle, pi r squared, times its height, but then we need to take 80% of that. I think that's right. I think it's letter F. On to the next. All right. For right triangle, UVW below, tangent of V. Tangent of V is 4 over 3. So tangent opposite over adjacent is 4 over 3. Um, simplified. And the length of UW is 10 centimeters. What is VW? So the ratio is 4 to 3 ratio. But how does that compare to a 10 to x ratio? So 4x equals 30, therefore x equals whatever 30 divided by 4 is, um, 6, 7 and a half. 7.5? I think that's right. It's just, it's the same ratio. It's just, uh, you have to multiply, yeah, 4 divided by 3 equals 10 over 7.5. I agree with that. All right, an isosceles triangle ABC below. AB is congruent to BC, and the measure of B is 74 degrees. What is the measure of A if it can be determined? So they're telling us that AB is congruent to BC. So these two are the same. So it looks like we have an isosceles triangle, which means that these two angles here are whatever 180 minus 74 is, but we have to split it in two because there's two of them. 
So 180 minus 74 is 106. Over 2 is 53 each. 53 degrees each. 106 to split, 53 individually. Okay, on to the next. A function f is defined by f of n equals 3n minus 10. And its domain is the set of integers from negative 2 through 10 inclusively. How many values of n is f of n positive? Okay, so negative 2, negative 1, so on, all the way to like, oh, to 10. So we're going to go to like 4, 5, and so on. Let's test some values here. So 3 times negative 2 minus 10, that's negative. We're only looking for positive. 3 times negative 1 minus 10 is negative. I mean, it's all negative. So it's going to have to be in these positive regions somewhere. So what number? Uh, 3 times 3 minus 10 is negative. However, 4 times 3 is 12 minus 10 is positive. So there's our breaking point. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 are all included to make this positive. That is 7 answers. On to the next. Suppose that m is a negative integer and n is 4 times m. Okay, so m is less than 0. n is is 4n. What is the result in terms of m for the addition of 1 over m plus 1 over n, but n is just 4n. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, so just 4 by 4. So 4 over 4m plus 1 over 4m should be equal to 5 over 4m. I think that's it, 5 over 4m. There it is, answer K. On to the next. All right, Ronnie has 70, 72 balls of three sizes, large, middle, and small. All right, so there's 14 more balls of large size than middle. So uh, large equals 14 plus middle. And middle equals 11 plus small, I guess. How many balls of large size does she have? And then large plus middle plus small equals 72. Okay, I've got this one set up. I know it's just going to be some solving and stuff, so I'm just going to come back to this, solve it later. All right, the measures of five interior angles of a hexagon are those, respectively. So it's not a regular hexagon. That's okay. What is the measure of the sixth interior angle? So the sum, um, what is it? 180, I think it's n minus 2. I'll check with the triangle. So 3 minus 2 is 1 times 180. So this is our equation for the total sum of interior angles. We have a six-sided shape here. So we're going to go 6 minus 2 times 180 is 4. It's not really a formula. It's just like a, it's just saying how many triangles makes up this shape, basically. Um, 360, 720. So 720 total degrees. And we're basically looking for 720, the missing one. So minus all of those added together. So 80... 85, 90, 94, and 99. Subtract that off. Let's just bust out the calculator for this one. So 720 minus, in parentheses, we've got 80 plus 85 plus 90 plus 94 plus 99. 272? <laughs> that doesn't seem right. Hexagon. Sum of interior 180, 360 by 40, 720. Is that sum of exterior? No, that's sum of interior, 720. I guess, okay, well, I guess it's an answer, but that's just a crazy hexagon. That's not even a hexagon. That can't be right. It's not even a hexagon. It's bigger than 180. What is going on? What is 720 divided by 6? So each one should be around 120, but they're all so much short. They're all so short of 120. I mean, mathematically, the answer is K, but that's not a hexagon because that's greater than 180 degrees. So, like, what type of. Okay, I guess it could be. Is it a hexagon? I don't know. You freaking answered for me in the comments, but I think mathematically the answer is 272. 
On to the next. <laughs> All right, in the figure, PQRS is a parallelogram. Its diagonals intersect there. Okay, so RS is 16. So RS is 16. And QR is 12. Okay, I'm already seeing a little right triangle here. Nice, kind of sitting on its side. What is the length in meters of TQ? All right, so they're specifically looking for TQ. Uh, I'm going to find SQ first. I know that RQ, so 12 squared plus SQ squared should equal 16 squared. So therefore, SQ squared is 16 squared minus 12 squared. So SQ equals square root of 16 squared minus 12 squared which is not a nice round number. So let's see here. So it's square root of 16 squared minus 12 squared. It's not going to be a round number. 10.58. So SQ is 10.58, but that we need half of that. So 5.29. 5.29, which is just directly in between, basically, those two answers. I mean, I can't even imagine what went wrong here. It's just a right triangle. <laughs> this should be cutting in half because it's a diagonal, so I'll put a big questionable star on this one because I have to come back and think about it. Unless I did some math wrong, but I really don't think I did. All right, get rid of this calculator, on to the next. All right, the equation of a circle, x minus 3 squared plus y plus 2 squared equals 9. What is the center of the circle? All right, so this is basic formula for circle without all the radiuses and stuff in there. So h is 3 and k is negative 2. So the center is 3 comma negative 2. We could put this into a graphing calculator if we want, just to double check, but I'm pretty sure that's right. On to the next. All right, suppose that x varies directly. Suppose that x varies directly as y squared and inversely as z. Which of the following expressions is a constant? So x varies, meaning there's a constant, directly with y squared and inversely with z. So then, which of the following expressions is a constant? Uh, rearrange, I assume, so multiply by z on both sides. Okay, so x, z equals the constant times y squared. Divide by y squared on both sides. So we get x, z over y squared should be a constant in this case. x, z over y squared, answer A. On to the next. All right, which of the set? Which is the set of real solutions for, ooh, so with absolute value, I learned this little trick back in the day that I loved. It's just to set it equal to another variable for the time being, and then come back and think about it later. So what we really have here is x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. Factoring that is easy. We don't have to worry about the absolute values. We just have uh, minus 3 and minus 1. So then, therefore, x, the answers to this expression is x equals 1 and x equals 3, which makes this equation true. However, x is not what we're looking for. Uh, we're looking for the absolute value of y equals 1 and the absolute value of y equals 3. And the nice thing about that is not only is 1 and 3 potential answers, but you could actually plug in the absolute value of negative 1 and get a 1, or the absolute value of negative 3, get a three so those are also potential answers and it looks like the set is this one right here answer k on to the next all right what is the slope of uw so i'm not going to read all this because i just see we're down three over seven negative three sevens on to the next what is the midpoint of uw okay so we know from the problem before and we can see here we're going down three over seven uh Where's our starting point? It's located, um, u is at 0, 5, and this is 7, 2. Okay, nice. A little easier to see. So 
what is the midpoint of UW right here should be the average of the X's, which is the average of zero and seven. And then the average of the Y's, which is the average of five and two. So that's going to be three and a half or seven halves, we'll call it. And seven halves. Seven halves come seven halves. Answer T on to the next. Which of the following expressions gives the measure of UWV? So UWV, looks like they're going to do a little trigonometry here. That's okay. So we are given opposite and we are given the adjacent side. So tangent of theta, that angle right there, is the opposite over the adjacent. Therefore, tangent inverse of that fraction, 3 sevenths, should be equal to our theta. Tangent inverse of 3 sevenths, there it is. Answer D. On to the next. All right, the right triangle UVW is rotated about the Y axis to form a right circular cone. Oh, nice. So it's like, and then it's like, it's a little too tall. But anyway, we got a cone. All right. Um, what is the radius of the cone's base? So again, we go all the way around. Then the radius is just this length right here, seven. Great. On to the next. The area of a single face of a cube in square inches is 49. It's a cube, so it's just made of squares. <laughs> Let me try to actually draw a square. Uh, and it's 49, so it's just 7 by 7, right? Which of the following expressions gives the total area in square inches of the cube? The total area, surface area, I assume is what they're trying to say. So, okay. So we got 49... And then we got 49 six times. I mean, a cube is just six of these faces. One, two, three on the front, three on the back. So 49 times six. Answer D. Okay. When graphed in the standard XY coordinate plane, the line Y equals four and Y equals X minus nine intersect at what point? Uh, so where, where are these Y values equal to each other? So we have Y equals four and we have Y equals X minus nine. So my question is, where does x minus 9 equal 4? Add 9 to both sides, x equals 13. So the x value is 13. That looks like it's our only possible answer. And then if we just try it really quick, 13 minus 9 equals y. Hey, that's 4. So the y coordinate works as well. Answer J, and on to the next. <coughs> In the standard xy coordinate plane, which of the following lines is perpendicular to this line? Okay, so 4y equals 5x minus 3. Divide by 4 on both sides. y, oops, let's go back to our original color, y equals 5 fourths x minus 3 fourths. However, they don't want a parallel line. They want a perpendicular line. And slope of a perpendicular line is the opposite reciprocal, or one over the other reciprocal, and opposite meaning negative of what that one was. What is that, negative 4 over 5? Five? 5 over 4 turns into negative 4 over 5. So then, okay, so our y equals negative 4 fifths x. And then we don't know the y coordinate, but is that just, that's literally just one of them, so it must be 1. I'm going to go with it to, in the interest of time. On to the next. For every real negative value of x, which of the following statements is false? Oh, I hate these ones. So, I'm going to mark all the ones that are true. So negative real values. Uh, you have an odd function here. If it's a negative real value, it's always going to be less than zero. If it's an odd function, so that's... This is also an odd function to the fifth and to the first power. So you're going to end up with that negative tacking itself back on. And you're going to go into the negative region. Same thing here, odd function to the first power. Okay, so we're down to two. So... So for letter J, it's like negative one. What's negative? What's the absolute value of negative one? Is positive one, which is greater than zero. And what's the absolute value of positive? I mean, this is always true as well because it's just the absolute value is also going to be an even function. So now down here, let's try negative one. So uh, is negative one absolute value squared is one minus two times one plus one is zero which is not less than zero. So confirmation that K is false in this case because it is an even function. On to the next. 
In trapezoid, PQRS illustrated below, PQ is 20 centimeters, okay? And QR is 16 centimeters, nice. And RS is 29. QRS, QRS is a right angle. What is the area in square centimeters? Um, yeah, there's like a fancy way to find trapezoid. Find the average of the bases, divide by two. I mean, that's honestly maybe just the way we should go. B1 plus B2 over 2 times the height. So base 1 is 29. Base 2 is 20. Over 2, the average of those times the height. The reason that works is because basically you're, you're finding the area of a square or a rectangle and a triangle. This is like the faster way of doing it. So 49 over 2 times 16, which is 49 times 8 which is 50 times 8 minus 8, which is 400 minus 8, which is 392. Is that an answer? 392, answer C. On to the next. Okay, imaginary numbers. So I minus, all right, I'm going to make my little tree here. So I is I, or the square root of negative 1. I squared is that squared, so just negative 1. I to the third is that times this I. And then I to the fourth is that times that, which is positive 1. Okay, so i is i. i squared minus i squared, which is negative 1, plus i cubed, which is negative root negative 1, minus i to the fourth, which is positive 1. So we have i plus 1 minus root negative 1, or I'm just going to call that i, Minus i minus 1. Wait a second. 1 minus 1. i minus i. I think it's just 0. On to the next. In the figure below, Ivan is standing 20 meters from the tree, looking at the top of it. His horizontal line of sight is 1.5 meters above the ground. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly mark this as 3 so I don't confuse myself. <sighs> Okay, so we're looking for, gives the angle, this angle right here. So we know that tangent of theta is 3 over 20, not 4.5 because of his line of sight there. So tangent inverse of 3 twentieths equals theta. Tangent inverse of 3 twentieths. There we go. On to the next. One of the following inequalities is graphed below in the standard xy coordinate plane. Which one? So this is uh, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. So y equals negative x. Well, not equals, but we'll get back to that. And then plus 3 is our y-intercept. But it's, like I just said, it's not equals. It's um, less than or equal to. So solid line is where you get the equals from and less than because all the red shaded region is below those y values. So y is less than or equal to negative x plus 3. On to the next. Okay, this is another one of those that seems like an easy question, but when you get into it, the math is just a little more involved, so I'm just going to start it. We've got about five questions we have to return to, uh, and just looking at the timer really quick, we have 17 minutes left. So with six questions left plus five more to return to, that's like 11, and we have 17 minutes left. I think we're doing okay. All right, the dimensions shown below are in inches. What is the area in square inches of the shaded region? And I note they're not looking for an answer, just a, an expression. So what I understand this to be is x by x, which means this right here is 15 minus x, which means this right here is 20 minus x. Okay, let's see what we can do with that. Oh, well, that's the shaded region. It's 20 minus x times 15 minus x. Sometimes it pays to just kind of mark it up. Uh, but we have to simplify now. So 15 times 2 is 30, and then another 0. And then we have minus 20x's minus 15 is minus 35x's plus x squared. So x squared minus 35x plus 300. Is that an answer? x squared minus 35x plus 300. Answer H. On to the next. All right, the graph of y equals cosine x in the standard xy coordinate plane is shifted right pi units. Okay, so a 
cosine x minus h plus k. So shift it to the right pi units, so cosine of x minus pi, minus on the inside of the parentheses, shift it down k units, so down, negative, and then reflected about the y-axis. So reflected meaning uh, negative 1 up front here. Which of the following represents after those? So negative cosine of x minus pi minus k. I'm assuming that's an answer. This is interesting. Okay. This is, this is good. This is good because... If you reflect about the y, wait, reflected about the y axis. Interesting, not about the x axis. So if you reflect about the y axis, that means you're making it's cosine though, it's an even function. So a reflection, but you're shifting pi. So it's almost like it should be plus pi, negative x. Is that how you shift about the... Oh, no. I don't know if I know the answer to this one. I, have to, I might have to think about this one a little more. I'm My intuition is that this is the answer, but I'm going to come back to this one. All right. For all positive real numbers p, which of the following expressions is equivalent to p to the 8th over p to the 6th divided by... So I'm going to just multiply it by its reciprocal, p to the 12th over 1. So that's uh, p to the 20th on top, p to the 6th on bottom. So 20 minus 6, we have 20 on top. We're going to cross out 6 of them, cancel 6 of them. So that leaves us with 14, 14 p's. P -p 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 on to the next. The product of two consecutive positive integers, right, the product, the product, I'm just going to, okay, so we have y and x. Um, so the product of these two, y times x, is x plus 8. And they're just straight up telling us that x is the larger one. Uh, so that means, and they're two consecutive positive integers. So uh, uh, y plus 1 equals x. You add 1 to y, you're going to get your bigger one, x. So, okay. What is x? So uh, we know that y equals x minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to take that information kind of off to the side here and plug it in. So x minus 1 times x equals x plus 8. So therefore, x squared minus x. I, I might be getting in a little over my head here. Add x to x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 0. Let's see. x and x. So this is negative 2 and positive 4. So x equals 2 and negative 4, but it's a positive integer, so x equals 2. Did I mess anything up? Yeah, I did. This is minus 2x. I was going to say intuitively, that just doesn't feel right. Minus 2x. So this is my, okay. Just classic negative mistake. Uh, so, okay, so x is negative 2 or positive 4. That makes more sense. X equals positive 4, probably. Because that means Y is 3. So does 3 times 4 equal 4 plus 8? 12 equals 12. Yep. On to the next. As shown below, PQRS is a, <laughs> is a trapezium. I've never heard that word. The measure of QRS is 45. The results of PQ and RS, the lengths of PQ and RS are given in inches. What is the area? So again, a area of a trapezoid is just it's two bases added together averaged out times the height which we don't know in this case but we do know that if this is a 45 degree angle um and that this is okay so this is 15 which means just the base itself is five and it's a 45 degree angle so its height must be five as well okay so we have 25 over 2 times 5, which is 125 over 2, which is 62.5. Letter H. Hope that's right. On to the next. All right, I guess this is a double check. 50, 
this area is 50, and then this is half of 50. Uh-oh. Yeah, I'm glad I double-checked here. Let me... I'm just going to erase. We're just going to start from scratch. we got some time here at the end. Literally, this should be easier than it is. It's, it's 15 down here, so that makes this 5. That's a 45-degree angle, so this must be 5. Does that work, though? Just so out of whack picture. So that means this is 50 and this is 25. Oh, no, no, no. It's half of five by five. So I was right. It, it, it's 62.5. Okay. Sometimes it's good to check yourself. Sometimes you devolve into madness. All right. What is two fifths percent of five ninths? Two fifths is equal to 0 0.4. 0 0.4 percent of something is less than one percent of that thing. So it's like that's as a decimal, that's 0 0.004 times five ninths. As a fraction, that's two over 500 times five ninths, which should be a five cancels with a five. So two over 900 which is 1 over 450. Is that an answer? Look at that, answer A. On to the last one before coming back to attempt the ones that were too hard. For what real values of x, if any, is log base x of x squared plus x minus 3 equal to 2? So change of base formula, basically what a logarithm is, is saying that the base x raised to the answer to should be equal to what's on the inside of the parentheses. Okay. Um, X squareds cancel. We are left with zero equals X minus three or X equals three. Yeah. Okay. Let's check our time here and see how much time we have to go back and redo. So we have eight and a half minutes here. And I know that there was like a chunk of a handful of questions that we didn't even start on. That's going to be here. So let's start here. We know that the price of a pizza with the given size is the same. Did I? Okay. We know that the price of the pizza with the given size is the same. What is the price of the large order of pizza? Okay. So we got a lot of pizza here. So what is the price of a large order of pizza? So seven large plus three small equals 53. And four large plus three small equals 38. Okay, let's do elimination. So we're going to subtract these two equations from one another. And we are going to get uh, three large. Those cancel. That's why I did it. 53 minus 38 is uh, 1315. So the large is $5, right? Boom. Okay, you can check my math, but we don't have time. How many distinct possible orders of pizza can one get? How many distinct, there are two sizes of pizza, large or small. Besides, there are seven kinds of pizza and four types of sauce. So we have two times seven times four, unless there's more to do. 28, 56. You can get a large pizza, this kind with this sauce, other sauce, other sauce, other sauce. Other kind, sauce, 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 sauce. Other kind, sauce, 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 sauce. And then small pizza. Repeat that whole thing through. Class 3B also purchased four pastas priced at $3 for every pasta and 10 garlic breadsticks priced at $2. What? Also purchased four pastas for... In 10... That's a confusing sentence. What is the total price of the pizzas? Pastas and garlic breadsticks class. So... Class 3B got three larges or four larges and three smalls. So they spent $38 on four larges plus three smalls. And then they also got four pastas times $3 per pasta plus 10 garlics. $2 for a pair of breadsticks. Are they really trying to confuse us by saying a pair of breadsticks? So it's, we really only got five pairs of breadsticks. I don't know. Let's see if it works out. 
So 12 plus 10 is 22 plus the 38 is 48, 58, 60 dollars. However, I do think they are kind of trying to confuse us with it could potentially be D. The, the pair of breadsticks, that is devious. All right, what else are we missing here? There's one. Oh, that's one I solved. So let's try, let's do one we haven't solved yet. All right, this is one we haven't solved yet. So, and we have it set up, which is nice. So, the question we're looking for is how many, we're looking for L. We're looking for L. We want L. So we know that uh, S equals M minus 11. So then L plus M plus M minus 11 equals 72. Okay, now we should need to figure out what M is. Uh, M is equal to L minus 14. M equals L minus 14. So L, let's move this up just a little. So L plus L minus 14 plus L minus 14 minus 11 equals 72. Nice. All right. So one, two, three L's minus 28 minus 38 minus 39 equals 72 plus 39. So plus 40 is 112, 111. So three L equals 111. Three L equals 111. So L is... So 99 is 33 and 4 makes 37. L is 37. I should double check that one because I did all that math. What is 111 divided by 3? Quick calculator. 111 divided by 3. 37. Okay. I just want to make sure. I do all that math for nothing. All right. Let's go see if we can find another one to get right here. Um, so this one is just, I just, I almost am just going to give myself the points for this and maybe check the answer because I feel like something's wrong here. What else? What else do we skip? What else do we skip? There's one. All right. And how much time do we have left? We have three and a half minutes. There are six blue balls, three yellow balls, and nine red balls of the same size in a box. So six blue, three yellow, and nine red ball is drawn at random and returned back to the box and a second ball is drawn at random. Oh, okay, this one's actually not hard at all. So we have nine red balls out of the total 15, 18. So nine out of 18 to pull a red. Then you put it back in. So then we just have to multiply and say three out of 18 for yellow. Um, this is with replacement, so that's easy. So that's one half times uh, one sixth which is one twelfth. We have a one twelfth chance. Okay, that question wasn't so hard. What else are we missing? We still got two minutes left here. Have we answered this? Okay, there's one question there. Making sure we've answered everything else. I'm not missing anything here. This might be the 36 team. This might be it. There's a couple that I feel iffy about, but, you know, a little stroke of luck. There's only one more we have to definitely answer, as far as I can tell. It looks like, yeah, okay. So just did this cosine one. Where is it? And how much time do we have to work on it? We have one minute and 52 seconds. Okay. So I'm just going to do it. I know how to draw a cosine. This is 2 pi. This is pi. I'm going to zoom. No, I'm not going to zoom in. So we're going to go. Cosine is like, like that. Okay. And it's shifted pi units to the right. So it's like that. So if it's like that, then now it's negative cosine. And then we flip it. So it's back to negative This right here is just essentially negative cosine. But they don't want the negative, so they actually just want it shifted. And it doesn't matter if it's shifted right or left, but it does need to be shifted down for sure. So these are not right.
What I'm concerned about is these two answers are actually the same, if I'm not mistaken. Oops. Let me erase. Come on, eraser, please. These two answers are the same because if you're shifting by pi, if you're shifting by pi, then it doesn't matter if you shift left or right by pi. But they technically want us... I think what they really wanted was for us to see that it's negative here, but then when we... Flip about the x-axis, it should be, or about the y-axis. should make everything in here negative, so it should be pi minus x. Uh, we're going with D. Okay, there's time. <sighs> Deep breath. <sighs> that was the best ending by far. I mean, the first couple tries... I was like rushing just to circle answers that I hadn't even read the questions yet. Uh, there is a possible chance that we score the 36 here. There's a couple questions in here that whether it's the test or my brain right now or whatever, I'm just not entirely sure about. But I am going to take the time right now to go ahead and track our answers. I'm going to speed this up and let's reconvene to see how collectively we All right, moment of truth. Let's go ahead and compare this to their supposed answer key, but I guess I'll do the fun work first of transferring this into the digital format. So, okay, bring out the red pen. E, H, A, F, C, G, E, J, E, G, D, K, C, H, C. Woohoo! H D K C G E K B H E G D J A F. Oh my gosh. I'm genuinely don't know. I mean, that's half of them. Halfway there. D H B K E K No. <laughs> D H B K E K a, okay, we'll have to look at 37. F, A, K, B, G, D, J, D. J, B, K, C, G, A, F, A, H, B, J, C, H, A, G. Okay, so 37 and 55 we missed. 37 and 55. I'm going to go back and make sure that's not one of the two that are like bad questions. You know what I'm saying? 37 and 55. So here's 37. Start. Okay. See, 37 is supposed to be, what are they telling us it's supposed to be? 37 is supposed to be A. See, that's like, that's what I'm saying. 37 is supposed to be A. 5. Well, I got 5.29 in the figure. EQRS is a parallelogram. Its diagonals intersect at T. RS is 16 and QR is 12. And it's a 90 degree angle right there. So 12 plus SQ squared should equal 16 squared. I, I genuinely think they got this problem wrong. Unless I'm going to double check what 16 squared minus 12 squared is. Let's see. One twelve. What's the square root of one twelve? Ten point five eight divided by two. I'm literally I I didn't get this one wrong. I they got it wrong. The answer is freaking five point two nine according to their setup. It, you in the comments can like double check me and tell me I'm going crazy, but I genuinely believe that they got the answer or the setup to that problem or something wrong. So I'm get, I'm awarding myself this credit. Now to 55, though. Let's see. Do we actually get the perfect score, quote-unquote? What is 55? Ah, see, this is the one that just... <sighs> but, hmm. What is it 55 supposed to be? I should have spent some more time on it. It's supposed to be B. Let's see. Yeah. K 
chaos in the end here. I am recording my audio as it turns out. Take a deep breath. <laughs> I don't <laughs> I don't even know what to do right now. I swear those two functions are the same. Whatever. We got a little chaotic at the end. I'm probably going to have to edit around this just a little bit, I guess, which I don't normally like to edit. I think I got 37 right. I think 50, 55. I, I have to check my calculator, but now my computer's all broken and everything. So I think I just got to wrap this up at a minus one. However, the question I have is, do you score a 36 if you only miss one on the ACT or do you sc score a 35 automatically? Let's see. ACT math score conversion. I think it might matter year to year. Yeah, I mean, they say if you get a 59 or 60, you get 59 or 60 of the questions, right? You get a 36. I'm claiming it. I'm freaking claiming it. I got a 36 on this ACT. I think this, because it's a practice ACT, that that problem got a little messed up. And I think I genuinely just got this problem wrong, even though maybe the graph would actually still be the same regardless. But I'm claiming it. And that means that uh, we get to move on to, I don't know, the next test. Will it be ACT or will it be SAT? GMAT, will it be um, AP testing? Maybe I'll just go back to like some like third grade fractions and decimals and stuff. I don't know, but my goal was to get a 36. And I believe by all, uh, and I'll let y'all be the judge in the comments that I think I got the 36 this time. And uh, we're going to go ahead and call it. And thanks for joining. Look out for more videos. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.